Hello everybody, Sellup here, and this is a mod called The Stanley Parable. I say mod, but it's actually just a game for the Source Development Kit, and I don't really know anything about it other than the fact that it's gotten tons of good reviews and it looks really interesting. So, let's see what this is all about. Chapter 1. That room number 427, I saw that on every screenshot that I've seen of this game, so I guess that will be significant. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Huh. What do I do if the monitor doesn't tell me what to do? Something's wrong here. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. Well, I can't open any of these doors, I guess. Where are the other employees? When Stanley uh -oh. came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What if I don't want to go left? This was not the correct way to uh -oh. the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. That guy kind of sounds mad at me. Hmm. I don't know. Seems like something interesting will happen if I go this way. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. Uh-oh. Maybe I should have listened to the guy. Well, I'm already committed oh, now. Oh, Stanley. <sighs> you know, you really aren't going anywhere. And I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Right now, you're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly... That's perhaps even more infuriating for me. So why don't you throw me a bone, give me a chance, and just let me tell the story I want to tell, hmm? Okay, I guess we'll try that. He seemed nice that time. So where does he want me to go? Now listen carefully. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Okay, fine then. It's dark in here. 
Good, good. Now, if you don't mind, there's something I'd like to show you. But to do that, I think it would be best for us to start from the beginning. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Oh, man. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. His job pushing buttons demanded little of him, so there was not much of himself to give, and in this way, Stanley's job felt less and less like his every day. But if buttons need pushing one day, it means they'll need pushing the next and then the next. So without question or judgment, Stanley continued to do what the screen told him. One keystroke flowed into another keystroke, flowed into his ride home, flowed into dinner, flowed into waking up, flowed into going to work, and here he was again. Stanley was typing out a complete sentence that said absolutely nothing at all. If in reality no one ever actually disappeared from the office, and Stanley never got the opportunity to make a decision, to choose which path he wanted to take, would his life still have any meaning? Perhaps when we long for something deeply enough, these hopes and fantasies become so strong in our minds that we truly believe that we're there, controlling that person and living that adventure. To manipulate your own thoughts and emotions might mean freedom from a self-imposed prison, but these delusions can be fatal to those who can't tell the difference. And so, Stanley asked, if that door never opened, if I'll never be able to walk away from those people and from these buttons, is this life still worth experiencing? Am I actually happy? Stanley answered this question by pushing a button. Then he pushed a button, oh my gosh. and then he pushed a button. Then he pushed a button. Then he pushed a button. Whoa. I think... I just stayed there until I died. Maybe this time we'll listen to him. Okay, we know this, this part. This is the story. Everybody's gone. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. This time we'll listen to you, man. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No mail for me. Okay. None of these doors open, man. As Stanley the entered lounge. the lounge, he was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. Oh. What's this? Hey, I like that magazine. Anyway, where's my boss? Nobody in there either. There's a note on the... on the computer. Maybe it says he's taking a five-minute break. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, it's so tempting to go downstairs, but this time we're going to listen. Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It was at this point that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner of his boss's office. That's a Stanley big had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret, and so he had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college, 1957. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, 
Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Stanley ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. It was totally by random. It was like there was a voice in my head telling me what buttons to press. This is kind of freaky. Why would this be in an office building? As he drew deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find... Whoa. Rose and rows of monitors. Screens with a number above it. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him. Whoa. Revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. Oh my gosh. What's going on in this place? An enormous control panel Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labeled with emotions. Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking. Eating. Doing work. Or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. And the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. It's a pretty loud ladder, and a really weird generator. The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom, the further from enslavement. I, I kind of still feel like a slave, because I'm doing everything this guy's telling me to do. people's emotions. Oh, hold it down. Destroy this godforsaken machine. Uh oh. Blackness. Power gone. All alone. And then As he stepped through the door, into the fresh outside air, a feeling of liberation rushed through Stanley's body. He had seen power, he had seen enslavement, and he had destroyed it. The underling was in control now. He had found his leading role. Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing, nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. But it didn't upset him terribly, because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. All he felt was a delight unlike any he had ever known before. Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, what to do, or how to feel. No more bosses. No more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. And he stepped out into the world, and he felt the cool breeze upon his skin, and Stanley was happy. Cool. We did it.
I still want to see what happens if I go up the elevator. So let's do one more. It seems like there's a lot of different endings to this game. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two <coughs> open doors, he entered the door. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Nope, we're gonna go up the elevator. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. As long as he doesn't make me jump off the roof. Let's see. Man, this is a slow elevator. And the guy is not talking at all now. Oh, here we go. Can I go up more? No. Uh-oh. I'm gonna be punished now. Whoa. That's not cool, man. Whoa. It almost perplexed Stanley that he had actually gone and stepped into this metal trap. After all, it should have been no surprise that this thing would lead him to his death. Oh but he thought gosh. to himself, this is simply the price to pay for ruining a perfectly good story. So he resigned and willingly accepted his fate the inevitable end toward which he had oh, spent no. so long stumbling. Farewell, Stanley. There's no way out. Dead. Whoa. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as he sent his subject down the conveyor belt and into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body killing him instantly. Jeez. But I'm alive still. And I have a different narrator. I disobeyed. And somebody it's saved me. It's a shame me. then that for all his work it was such a meaningless victory for the narrator. Did he really think he would accomplish anything by murdering this disposable vessel? Chess is cool. I think he has him in a checkmate. Not another one of these. What is going on in this place? Every possible choice Stanley could make had been designed for him long before he ever set foot here. The narrator wanted to kill him. Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit oh, start. No. Is this thing gonna kill me? Okay, we're good. There's the exit. There's no salvation for either of these two, I'm afraid. The narrator had as little power over Stanley as Stanley did over the paths that he walked. But listen to me. This story is not over. Why am I you back here? You can still here? save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now, and it'll be your only true choice. 
Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... Oh. Wow. I'm really dead this time, I think. The credits aren't coming up. What if I wait a while? She said don't let time choose for me. That was some pretty good voice acting too. Okay, I don't think anything is gonna happen. Well, that was the Stanley Parable. Hope you guys enjoyed it, it seems pretty cool. I think there's a couple more endings, I'm sure, that I didn't see. So if you guys want to check it out, you can download it at the link in the description. And thank you for watching.